Hey guys, Jen here from Main and Subs and Such, and I have to make some more of my shampoo, my liquid shampoo. I've tried for a year or more to use a bar shampoo, and I uh, none of them work for my hair. I have very fine, thin hair, so. Um, I watched the Soaping 101 video and Kathy made a soap, a uh, liquid soap, and um, she used it to make shampoo. So I've tweaked the recipe, I have played with the recipe a lot, and I have finally got it to where I like it. Uh, me and my husband have been, with the kids, of course, have been using it for several months. We both love it. And my hair is clean. I don't have the greasy feel. That was my problem. My husband has the same type of hair. That after um, I wash my hair and I would dry it, uh, around my scalp, out about two inches or so, I would have a greasy feel. It would look good. It would look clean but I would have a greasy feel to my hair and I hate that. But not with this sh liquid shampoo. So, um, I'll go over my recipe with you guys if you wanna use it because I absolutely love it. And I don't think I'll ever sell it because labeling requirements for shampoo is different than um, bar soap. So, the only change I am making this time is that I'm going to um, <clears throat> add, I have added silk to my life solution. <clears throat> and I'm hoping it will just give my shampoo a silky feel. So, um, I'm going to go ahead and start getting this mixed and then here in a little bit we'll go over the recipe. So here's my oils. They're all, the only hard oil is coconut oil. And then here is my life solution with the silk. There is a few little strands that is undissolved but I don't think it's going to be a big issue. Now this is something that takes a long time to trace. Liquid soap is not like uh, bar soap. This takes a long time. So I'll probably cut the video off and bring you guys back several several times. <coughs> Now when I make liquid soap, I do not let my kids in the kitchen because I don't, this, is, this splatters much easier. Crock-Pot on low. My Crock-Pot has three settings. It has warm, low, and high. Now, if you'll notice, I'm not sure how well you guys can see, but as I mix it, um, there's some bubbles on top, but um, as I hand mix it, it will re-separate. I mean, this probably will take me 15-20 minutes to get to a trace. So I'm going to pause and I'll bring you back in a little bit. I'll let you know how much time's gone by. Okay guys, it has been five minutes. As you can see, there's not much change other than I have more bubbles on top. The bubbles are fine. It's not nothing to worry about. sure if 
I said this, but I do have my stick blender on high. Um, and what I have found with the, I've not made a ton of liquid soaps. Uh, this is my second time making my big batch of the shampoo. Um, I have, I've tweaked, okay. I'm keeping my base recipe the same in my shampoo. I'm changing how I mix it to make my shampoo. I'll, ha I'll, I'll do a video on that. But I'm um, not sure if you guys can see, but there's separation. There's oil that's not emulsified sitting to the top. Um, and I've noticed with um, liquid soaps that it'll go from liquid to thick trace in a matter of seconds. And I'm going to try to catch that for you guys. <laughs> I'm going to pause and we'll come back. Okay, I'm back again. Um, ouch. I touched the side of my crock pot and it's hot. It has been another five minutes. <clears throat> and I just want you to know, liquid soap will test the boundaries of your stick blender. If you don't have a heavy duty stick blender, I don't recommend liquid soap. I mean, I really don't. My stick and blender is a KitchenAid. And so far, it has not let me down. I have done two, three, four, five liquid soaps in hundreds and hundreds of batches of bar soap. I'm not sure if you guys could see the separation. See, I've been stick blending for 10 minutes and it's still separating. <laughs> bring you back. Okay, I'm back. Uh, it's been another five minutes. So I've been stick blending off and on for 15 minutes. And as you can see, I'm still getting separation. You see that? It's like, see that separation? I hope you can see it. It's starting to come together, but there's still a lot of oils floating on top. But I'm getting like applesauce stuff underneath. So it's not going to be too much longer. It's wanting to stay together. Liquid soap, you got to make it. This test it really tests your stick blender. I always get nervous at this stage. This is what I do. Stick blend a while, then I stir it. And this will make a lot, a lot, a lot of liquid soap.
feel that it's almost there. But I'm going to pause you guys a minute and I'll bring you back. Okay, guys, I think I'm getting ready to hit trace. I may be wrong. be wrong <laughs> again god my sick blender's hot <sighs> cool down baby bring you back okay I'm gonna let my stick blender rest a while and I'll go over my recipe with you guys and I'll just hand stir it right here while I go over my recipe and you guys can look at it <laughs> and listen all right let me get my oh there went my spoon get my stick blender out it's really hot and I don't want to ruin it so I'm gonna let it rest, and you're not gonna hurt the soap by letting it rest. Okay, now this is, I make 48 ounces of um, oil. And in my recipe, I have 28 ounces of pumice olive oil. I have 10 ounces of 76 degree coconut oil. I have eight ounces of castor oil. I like lots of bubbles for my shampoo. And then I have two ounces of jojoba oil. Um, jojoba oil is the closest oil to your natural sebum. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful for your hair. Um, and then the water is 18.25 ounces. The lye, which is the KOH, it's potassium hydroxide. That is why it takes forever to trace because it is a different kind of lye. It is 9.45 ounces. And I super fat this at 0% on soap calc. Because you do not want a lot of liquid oils um, left over. Um, because then it will make your hair oily. Or you can use this. I, use, I have it broke down as liquid soap for everything body. So I mostly only use it for our hair because I love my bar soaps. So I just make shampoo with it. My mom loves it. And um, how I make the actual shampoo, we'll go ahead and go over that since I am letting my stick blender rest. Um, okay, here it is. In my recipe, this is my percentage. I have 90% soap. So I have 90% of the liquid soap. I have 10%, no, wait a minute, 9, 9% Oh gosh, I can't read. 90% soap. Let me get this right. 6% of coconut milk. And 4% honey. Uh, at one point I had um, olive oil in it. In the actual um, shampoo. But um, I didn't like... It left that greasy feel in my hair. I removed it and I no longer have the greasy feel at all. It's wonderful. I love it. And then I have, um, I use in the batch that I make, I only make like two eight ounce bottles at a time. One for me and one for my husband. And uh, the kids use whatever we are using. So I do um, three grams of a thickener. Um, 
and I use five grams of preservative. I hear you, Noah. And I use liquid Germal Plus because it's a broad spectrum um, uh, preservative. It's paraben free. Um, I, I just really like it. So that's what preservative I use. Uh, that's just personal preference. You can use whatever you want. And where everything is already cool, liquid state, you know, it's cool. Um, I don't have to wait. I, I do it in two parts. I'll do a video of it. I, I measure out my soap in one cup. Uh, and then in another cup, I measure out my coconut milk, my honey, my preservative, and I add my thickener to it. And I blend that up all together because the thickener has to be added to a water phase in order for it to be like activated and work. So I add it to my coconut milk and my preservative and blend it up and let it sit for like five minutes and then I add it to my soap. And that is my recipe. And we are going to give this another buzz. bring you back in a few okay guys I'm back I'm not sure if you can see it's getting thicker but there still looks like it's kind of applesauce looking I mean it's still not mixed all together but I think I'm almost there and I, you know, I've said that before <laughs> why with this when it gets to this thick part part it starts to want to splatter I usually have to change clothes after I get it to trace and get it cooking It's 10:24. I started blending, mixing at 9:56. So we've been blending almost 30 minutes. splattered it oh that's why with this I do not let the kids in here because it splatters too easily Come on, 
so we're almost there. Hannah? What, Austin? No, it's not done. That's, it'll be okay for a few minutes, okay? Huh? Well, you stay away from over here. I put that up so your brother can't get in here. Hey. Hey, what? Is there stuff in the litter box? Yeah. What did Noah put in there? I don't need cookies. You're going to have to wait until Mommy gets done. All right, we're back for the 10,000th time. What time is it? Ugh. I've been recording over 21 minutes. Goodness gracious. I splattered on myself. Oh, we've done it. I think. Bring you guys back. All right, we're back to mixing some more. Still not there. Oh, it's ten thirty. I'm gonna take forever. Oh, goodness gracious. Here in a minute, my stick blender will quit working. Like, it's not gonna do any more. That's what we're looking for. you guys and hot We've almost whipped it in there. We're almost there.
ready to give up on me. But we have made it. Finally. Now this bad boy is ready to start cooking. See what I mean? It'll test the limits of your stick blender. All right. Now, I'm going to cover this up and let her cook. And I'll bring y'all back in about 30 minutes or so. Hey guys, I'm back. It's been um, 30 minutes. It's now 11 o'clock. And I'm going to stir this down. So looking good, looking good. Now, see, I don't sell my liquid soaps at all because, you know, to figure out your time it takes, I mean, because it takes several days to make it. Literally. So, I don't know how you would figure that up because once it cooks, it takes several takes a few hours to cook and then once it gets to paste you have to um, let it uh, dilute it and to, for me I normally do that over a few days um, I let it dilute itself slowly so I would have no idea how much to charge for my liquid soap so right now I've been for anybody that wants to try it or whatever, um, like my mom and my sister-in-law and stuff, I've just been, you know, giving them a bottle. But, lid back on. We're going to come back in another 30 or so. Hey guys, it's been another 30 minutes. And so it's been cooking for an hour. It looks really good. It's about all translucent -y, or however you want to say it um i'll probably cook this for another hour and then i will test for clarity and i'll show you guys that so we'll bring you back okay guys it's been another 30 minutes it's now 12 o'clock so, and I'm not sure if you can see, but right around the edges, I'll pick this piece up, it's really starting to be translucent, um, which is great. I'll cook it for 30 more minutes, and then I'll test for clarity. Um, and the reason I, I never did say, but the reason... I do my super fat at zero. It's because I don't want to have to try to neutralize it with either citric acid or baking or um, uh, borax. And because your KOH, you have, you have to look at your supplier where you buy it from. They're all different, but um, they uh, mine is 90% pure. So with that being said. Um, when I super fat at zero, it's really super fatted at 10%, if that makes sense. So, um, because my KOH is only 90% pure. So when I use the recommended amount, I am 10% short. I hope that makes sense. Anyways, um, so what I'm going to do is cook this for another 30 minutes and then I will test it for clarity and what I do with that is I get a little bowl of distilled water, just a little ounce or so, um, and I'll, I'll get it hot, I'll, I'll stick it in the microwave or something, you know, just to get it hot, and then I'll put just a little bit of my soap paste in there, and that's what this is, the soap paste. 
and I'll use a little whisk and I'll whisk it till it dissolves and if it is clear um, then it's good to go it can be cloudy also because some oils like jojoba um, make a cloudy soap now if it's milky then that's not good but it can be cloudy there is a difference um, milky is when it kind of looks like milk you know um, that means there is still active lye in here that needs to be uh, cooked now if it's clear or cloudy then it's good to go and I'm done I can leave the soap paste like it is and dilute it when I'm ready or I can dilute it all now or dilute part of it or however you want to do it normally I just dilute it all because um, I use it for our shampoo and um, you know I just dilute it all at one time you don't have to you can do whatever um, but um, the next 30 minutes I'll bring you back and we will do the clarity test okay guys I'm back it's been another 30 minutes yes Austin I'm going to stir this down I've got my water over here stir 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 I think it's done. Mommy! What, Austin? I need your test for the baby. Okay. I need to get my phone well with the flowers in. Alright, push that back there. Here's my water. Can you guys see it? There it is. Hold on. I got me a little spatula. I got a little bit of soap. Uh oh. You all right? You're you're stuck, ain't you? Just blending and blending and blending to get that soap paste dissolved. I need some alcohol Mommy. to spray down the bubbles. Mommy, I missed. Huh? I wanted to go to my four-wheeler for the roses. Honey, your four-wheeler's been out there for a long time. It's all right. I need to go to the roses. All right. Mommy, will it let me get in for the roses? You can see there's lots of nice bubbles Please, in there. Some, let me dad put frozen to the ground. It's not going to freeze to the ground, son. It is. It is, mother. So let me don't get it. Please, please, please. Not right now, honey. Please. Okay. Please. 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 Alcohol will kill the bubbles. I'm not sure if you guys can see, oh, hello, but that looks really good. Um, it is a little uh, cloudy, but that is okay. Please, 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 please. I'll pick you guys up and let you look please. down in it. Please. So you can see, if it focuses, please, you can see please, right through that. Please. Which is what please, we want. I'm going to stop doing. Let's see, put it over here. Okay, yeah, there it is. Please, I'm not doing it's that. a little Mom? cloudy. Mommy, but that's because of the jojoba oil. But it's not milky. It does not look like milk. And as you can see, Mommy. you can clearly see through Mommy. it. So, our paste is done. Mom. Mom. Alright, our paste is done. So, what I will do, I'm going to shut it off. And this is what I do. This takes several days, everybody to each their own. I take and I cover it with uh, water, with distilled water. Actually, I pour this back in there that I've used. And you guys can see, I'll show you. I'll bring it back over here and I'll stir it. And you can see, see the bubbles that it makes? Adding that in there. See that? Look at them bubbles. 
That's awesome. Lots and lots of nice bubbles. Okay, so what I'll do is I will cover this, and the only reason it's bubbling is because it's so hot, and I put water in there, um, is I will cover this with water, and I will let it sit overnight. And then I will strain off what has turned into liquid, and then I'll add more water. And that's what I do. I'm gonna sit you guys back up here. All right, and that's what I do when I um, dilute my paste. I just add water to it, let it sit overnight, and then I strain it off. And then I'll add more because the crock, this crock pot is not big enough to dilute this much paste. And I know after 24 hours, it is diluted as far as it's going to dilute with the amount of water I've put in there. So my crock pot is off. I'm going to unplug it. Get this soap out. Now you can test for the pH. Cool them out. You can actually do the tongue test. But I have found and learned with the measurements that I have and cooking it for, you know, the two hours um, that if, uh, when, I, when I do the dilution or the clarity test, if it tests clear, I'm good to go. So, All right, I'm going to get my water. Hi, Noah. And I only use distilled water. And what I do is I fill her up with some water. I'll probably use the rest that's in this gallon. I have another one. <coughs> oh, goodness. I hit you guys. Sorry. I stick the lid on it. I push it back there. And I leave it alone. And that is my shampoo recipe. I'll show you some um, laundry detergent. This is some of my laundry detergent. This is the liquid that I use. Um, it's 100% uh, coconut oil uh, soap. It's really, really bubbly. Um, it makes this plus a little bit more and then a gallon is what I end up making when I make it. Um, so it's probably like a gallon and a half is what I end up making. And it lasts a super long time because I only use a quarter cup for a batch of laundry. And I love it. I also have a powder mixture that I use with it. Um, along with this, but this, for homemade detergents, this is what I have found that works. Um, you know, grating up a bar of soap, I have not found that works. I don't, I, I mean, my white clothes don't come out white. With this, it does come out white. Um, I've been using it for six months or so now, and I really like it. My white clothes are not turning dingy and whatnot, and it, it really works. But I have a powder mixture that I use a quarter cup, and then I use a quarter cup of my liquid soap that I make. I actually just made this. See, you can already see the bubbles from me just moving it around. Um, I made this day before yesterday. So, or two days ago, I think. So, yeah, that's good. But that is how I make my liquid shampoo. I'll have, I will have the description. In the description, I will have the recipe if you guys want to use it. And I will also give you the recipe to mix this actual shampoo. Um, you know if you want it. And I'll, I'll pause you and I'll go grab my shampoo out of the shower and I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, here is my shampoo out of my stall. It's all cloudy because I always have it sitting up upside down. 
and I turned it up like this bringing it out here but anyways you can see how thick it is it is not like store-bought it is thick don't get me wrong I'll show you some I mean you can, it's thick but it's not like store-bought and um, let me wipe that off smells heavenly I scented mine this time in Japanese cherry blossom yummo but I will give you guys the recipe and it'll make two of these bottles uh, my recipe does eight, uh, 16 ounces this is an 8 ounce bottle and I'll show you my pre er, not my preservative yes Austin he's messing with the TV okay here it is what hold on this is my thickener that I use make sure that focuses on it so you guys can see and order it or if you got it or whatever That's, this is what I use it's HEC I cannot say the word um, but you need very very little like I use two to three grams which is just a tiny tiny bit this is an eight ounce bag I got from lotion crafters and the purpose because your only usage rate is 0.1 to 2 percent and the purpose of this is to to thicken uh, lotions and shampoos and uh, conditioners and stuff like that that's the purpose of this so this is the thickener that I use and um, I asked in a lot of soaping groups uh, what to use what kind of thickener what to buy and the majority said to get this so I did and I really like it it does not ha make it turn cloudy um, actually the fragrance oil and the coconut milk is what turns it this cloudy color if not this would be clear um, but yeah the coconut milk and the um, uh, the fragrance will turn your uh, shampoo or whatever you your body wash if you want to use it for body wash it would turn it cloudy so that's what I use HEC is the name uh, hydro hydrox hydro um, hydroxyl cellulose oh I don't know how you say it anyways that's what I use and I just get my coconut milk from the grocery store that's it I mean I just get my coconut milk out of the grocery store and then I use honey and my shampoo base that's it and I I like you can mess you can tweak I think some people use 70 percent um, uh, soap but I like the really thick bubbles now you won't get really big fat bubbles you'll get creamy and thick bubbles in your hair and actually you know will take you a minute to rinse out real thick bubbles and that's what I like uh, is the nice big thick bubbles so anyways this video is really really long I'm sorry but um, I'll make another video of actually making my shampoo but this is my shampoo base so thank you for watching